Well, how many are ready to receive the word today? Yeah. Amen. A couple of you, that's good. The rest of you just have to put up with me. There we go. God is good. Father, I thank you, Lord, that as we study your word today, that you'll speak to our hearts, that we'll see something new and fresh from the word of God. It's living and active and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and we just want to be spoken to today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I really believe that this message I'm about to share, it's, it can be a life-changing message. I think it will help us to see things from heaven's perspective. I think too many times we get caught up in the here and the now. We get caught up uh, in the dash between two numbers, as they say. You know, one day there will be a gravestone with your name on it, and you're the dash between two numbers. And we get caught up with this world. We get caught up with our life. And God wants us to be a blessed people. He wants us to enjoy life. He wants us to raise godly kids and prosper. He wants these things for us. But we can never lose sight of eternity. And so quickly... We do. And I, studying revival history, being a student of revival history, uh, I know in the past our forefathers before us and the generations before us really had a greater perspective on eternity. And they saw everything from eternity perspective. And Pastor Jacques preached a message a few weeks ago talking about generations. And, and I, didn't e I haven't even heard the message yet, but apparently my message followed suit a bit. Uh, that God is a God of generations. God looks at the, from, from outside of time, he sits back and he looks and he sees Adam and Eve, and then he sees the coming of the Lord, and we're somewhere in between there, and we have a destiny and a purpose to fulfill, amen? And we're just one piece in a puzzle, and uh, we need to be focused not on just ourselves, but also on those who are coming after us, those who are younger. Some of the kids are up here, are going to be the next worship leaders, are going to be evangelists, are going to be business people who are going to go and establish the kingdom. Like, we don't know, but God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us, Amen? God has a plan and a purpose for you. You're not a mistake. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. God had a plan and a purpose for you, and that's what it's all about. It's about purpose. We have to know the purpose of God. Amen? And so I talked uh, out of Hebrews chapter 11 um, last week, and it was very interesting because Hebrews chapter 11 is really what I call the hall of faith. I likened it to like, the Hockey Hall of Fame, right? If you go to the Hockey Hall of Fame, it's going to show you like Gretzky and all of these uh, professional hockey players and Bobby Orr and all these guys. And it's not going to talk about every single thing that they did and all of their accomplishments. But what, what you're going to see is you're going to see plaques, you're going to see write-ups about the greater accomplishments that they did. Amen? And you see that when you go to a place like the Hockey Hall of Fame. The greatest accomplishments will be in plaque form for you to read and, and to, to marvel at. And so I read through Hebrews and... Uh, there's some pretty great things there. I mean, Noah being divinely warn, warned, he built an ark for the saving of his family, right? We see, we see that there's these, these great things that those who went before us, they did great exploits. And I, I think of Joseph's life. Joseph accomplished extraordinary things in his life. And none of these are mentioned. None of, none of the things that Joseph, I think, are really cool things that weren't mentioned. I mean, he endured conspiracy against him by his own brothers, and he was thrown into, he was thrown into a well, right? And, uh, and then he, he was uh, he sold as a slave into Egypt. He endured horrific trials. He ruled with kings. He saved the known world from severe famine. Um, however, none of these things are mentioned. And so I want to start here in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 20 and 21 it says let me just find my scripture here because I don't have the notes you got it there by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come and this is what I talked about last week that God looks at the fact that Isaac was able to bless Jacob and Esau concerning say things to come see our faith has to go into the future we need to be thinking about future generations, and, 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 J and Isaac was able to do that. Isaac realized that the fulfillment of the promises that were given to his father and his father's father were going to be passed down from generation to generation, and God honored that. But here we look at Joseph here in the next verse, verse 22. It says this, By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel, and he gave instructions concerning his bones. And I thought, that's it. He gave, he, basically, he's getting credit here, his faith. He's getting credit for planning his own funeral. Like, what is That's the greatest thing he did was he planned his own funeral, and it's mentioned in the Hall of Faith. What, what's going on here? But see, he play, why is this so faithy? 
That's what you're asking, right? Why is this so faith? What's so faithy about this, okay? I'm glad you asked because we're going to talk about that. In, G- in Genesis chapter 50, verse 22 to 26. So Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Machar, the son of Manasseh, were also brought up on Joseph's knee. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, um, but God will surely visit you. See, Joseph's, Joseph's dying, and he says, listen, I'm dying, but God will surely visit you. Say with me, surely visit you. And he will bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Okay? Saying, God will surely visit you and will carry you, and you will carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died being 100 years old and 10 years old, and they embalmed him and put him in a coffin. They put him in a coffin. And so what happened here was, was Joseph was giving commandments concerning, see, Joseph knew. Joseph knew that, listen, the new king, the new pharaoh, he doesn't know me. They, they don't respect me. I, I was a ruler in the land, but they don't respect me. They're not going to respect you. The people began to go into bondage and into slavery. And he knew that it was going to take a visitation of God to fulfill the promise that was given to his great-grandfather, Abraham. Right? So, so, so something's got to happen here. And I'm prophesying, I'm prophesying the future that God will surely visit you. And when he does, I want you to take my bones with you. Don't leave me in Egypt. Right? And so this is what he's saying to his brethren. And I want to say this, that the bones represent the prophetic promises of God. When I say the word prophetic, that just means of things to come. Promises that God has given you concerning your future. In Joseph's case here, there was a prophecy given, a word that was given to Abraham and to his father Isaac that said, listen, I'm going to bless you, or his great, his grandfather Isaac, I'm going to bless you and I will give you these lands, the lands of Canaan, all that area. And so he was saying, listen, God will surely visit you because he declared that we will we, we will own these lands. These will be our lands. Egypt is just a pit stop. Don't leave me here. And so the bones represent the prophetic promises of God that were spoken. And by faith, Joseph commanded them to carry his bones out. And so Genesis chapter 26, verse 3. Um, last week we talked about the prophetic promise given to Isaac, which is Joseph's grandfather. In Genesis chapter 26, Verse 3, we're going back in time a bit. It says that Isaac dwelt in the land. And he said, I will be with you and I will bless you. For you and your descendants, I will give all of these lands. You see, this was the promise. And I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. So, you know, when God says something, how many know that God's not a God that he should lie? But the problem is we, all, we, we always want God to move when we want him to move. And God has his own timetable. And you have to be okay with that. Well, God, you promised this. I want it now. No, it takes time for God to prepare your promise because you're not ready for it half the time. And God has a timetable for everything. There's a season under heaven, right? There's a season for everything. And God knows that season. And so what, ha- what we need to recognize here is that there has to be a buy-in to the promises of God that were declared in the past. Go to one more scripture here in um, Genesis chapter 33, verse 18 to 20. Now what Joseph wanted, Joseph wanted the children of Israel when they left, when God surely visits them, take my bones out of here and I want my bones buried in Shechem. You say, where's where Shechem? Well, we're going to read about Shechem. We're going to go back in time a little bit more to Joseph's father. And this is what happened in Genesis 33, verse 18 to 20. Then Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan. And when he came from Padan Aram, and he pitched his tent before the city, and he bought a parcel of land. So he purchased some land in Canaan. He pitched his tent from the children of Haman, Shechem's father, for 100 pieces of money. And then he erected an altar there, saying, The Lord is God. The word Shechem means shoulder. It means shoulder. And what Joseph knew was that his 
grandfather purchased a piece of land in the promised land. Now, a famine came, and they all had to rush to Egypt to eat, and they kind of deserted the land, but that land was there for them. That was land that was purchased. And he said, listen, that was the land that my f- was promised to my, my, my father and to my grandfather and to my great-grandfather. And you know what? God is faithful to fulfill his word. And we're, when we leave this place, because God will not lie, he promised he's going to take us out of Egypt. And when we come out of this place, take my bones and plant them in Shechem, the place that God has given us. Amen? Joseph died at 110 years old. As you know, a new Pharaoh who did not know Joseph came to power. And the children of God went into bondage. But 144 years after, God surely visited them and shook the whole place up. And you understand, how many remember the, um, you know, Moses and the Ten Commandments? And remember the movie? And some of you know the Bible passage, how Moses went in and God delivered them from Egypt from the Pharaoh, because the Pharaoh, you know, there was a big deliverance that took place. But while everyone was going and saying, okay, God's delivering us, let's get all our stuff together, and Moses is running around looking for the bones of Joseph, because he remembered the promise. I'll read that to you in Exodus chapter 13, verse 19. It says, and Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had placed the children of Israel under solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry out my bones from here. So Israel was being led by the presence of God as they left Egypt. A cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But they were also carrying the bones of promise. And this, this is so important that we get this because as the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, they were following the presence of God, but then they would look and see a coffin. And every time they look at the coffin, they said, oh, yeah, I remember our purpose. Our purpose is that we're supposed to go to the promised land. God has given us a parcel of land. So every time they looked at the coffin, every time they looked at the box of bones, they remembered there's a prophetic promise. There's a prophet. I got to keep my eyes on the purpose. I got to keep my eyes on the promise. I'm going to follow that. And so it was because what happens in church many times is, uh, especially in charismatic circles, is we can get caught up following the presence of God. That's a good thing. But you can go to some churches and they're worshiping and say, what, what's this all about? Well, I just want to be in the presence of God. Well, what's your purpose? What are you going to do? I don't know. I just want to be in the presence of God. No, but what's your purpose? What's the pro- prophetic promise for your church? What's the prophetic promise for your life? What is God making you into? I don't know. I just love his presence. Well, that's awesome. And you got other churches where it's all about the purpose-driven life. You know, we just discipline and organize and, you know, we... We have devotions, and we have purpose, and we, we plan our strategy, but they don't know how to worship. How many know you need both? You need to be led by the presence, but you need to keep your eyes on the promise. And so as the children of Israel were leaving, they were ordered to carry the bones of promise. Then the leadership was passed from Moses to Joshua under The children of Israel under Moses' leadership were commanded to follow the presence. Under Joshua's leadership, they were commanded to carry the presence. So they carried the Ark of the Covenant, and the Jordan split, and they went into the Promised Land. But I want you to know something. They were carrying two boxes. And that's the title of my message. We need to carry two boxes. You need to learn to carry the presence of God with you, but you also need to learn to carry the promises of God. You need to carry the purposes of God. Amen? And when you're carrying both boxes, you're going to have the balance to go where God has called you to go. All right? Israel needed to focus on the prophetic promise of God as they carried his presence. And so we need to be, uh, uh, you know, we need to be driven by the presence and by the promises of God. The bones represent the prophetic promises of God. And why is this important? You want to know why it's important? Anybody? Okay, let's go to the script. We'll go to the Word of God. How's that sound? 1 Timothy 1.18. 1 Timothy 1.18. We'll bring that up here. It says here, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy. Now, this is Paul the Apostle talking to Timothy, his disciple. He says, According to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that you may wage a good warfare. In order to fight the good fight of faith, in order to go to the promise of destiny that God has for your life, you need to 
take the prophecies previously spoken over your life and you have to hold fast to them. You've got to keep your eyes on them. You've got to press towards them. Amen? Because the prophecies and the promise of prophecy is actually going to lead you into your purpose. Amen? The promises will always lead us to our purpose. The next scripture is 2 Peter 1, 4. Let's look at this. I sound like a Chinese child. Right? By which we've been given, God has given us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these, through what? Through the promises, through promises, uh, we may be partakers of God's divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world. It's the promises of God. If we don't learn to keep our eyes on the prophetic promises that God has spoken over our life, we'll, we'll lose, we will lose a sight of the destiny that God has for us. We'll lose sight of the purpose. And that's what happened with the children of Israel. Is begin, they, they kept looking at the presence of God, and depending on the presence, they stopped looking at the promises. They stopped looking at that co coffin and saying, oh yeah, by the way, this is our purpose. We're, we're taking Joseph's bones to the promised land. We're burying him there. That's where we're heading to. Just, and and, and they, they forgot the promises of God. And what I want to do today is I want to encourage you to go back and pick up some bones that maybe you've cast out. The past needs to be linked to our future, guys. And I, I want to show you something. Okay, look at this box here. I have this box. And this is my, my coffin here. This is my, my, bones of, my bones of promise here. I got it here. All right, so I'm carrying my bones of promise. God has spoken prophetic words over me. He has destiny over me. And just like Paul encouraged Timothy, you need, you need to, hey, you need to pay attention to those prophetic words because if you do, you can fight the good fight of faith. But how many know sometimes bones get heavy? You're like, oh, I, do I really got to carry this anymore? It's like it could be fulfilled already. Enough's enough. So what you do. Well, that should have been fulfilled. You know, 20 years ago, God said that, you know, that my children were going to serve the Lord, and, and they're all, you know, they're not serving God, and I've done everything I can. So, you know what, I guess God's not going to fulfill that. So, you know what, I'm just not going to pray about that anymore. I'm not going to carry. I'm not going to focus on You know what? You know what? I, I, God, does, God doesn't really love me. I'm just going to cast that prong. I had a prophetic word that I was going to do well in business, that God was going to prosper me. Well, you know what, that's heavy. I don't want to carry that anymore. And what you're doing is you're going through the wilderness, leaving a trail of bones behind you, trying to lighten the load. But the reality is, listen, carry the bones of promise. Don't lay them down. God has a destiny and a purpose for you. And if you cast out the promises, you have no destiny anymore. And I believe what God wants is God wants us as a people to go back and say, oh, okay, I'm going to pick up this bone, this word that was spoken over me, and I'm going to put it in back into the box of promise. Amen. I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab this bone here. I'm going to put it back in my box of promise. I'm going to put this bone. I'm not going to throw out the bones of the prophetic words that were spoken over me. Because I've got to fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Maybe some of you have cast out some bones. Galatians chapter 6, 9 says this. Let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. If God said that your kids were going to serve God, you've got to trust him. Amen? I know my mom and dad received a word that their kids were going to serve God, right? And you invested in us, and then they saw me especially go down the opposite direction. I went the opposite way, as far left as I could. And did you have faith? And the amazing thing was when I came home, she was at peace. I'd come home with my friends, and... And she'd be like, treating me like a man of God. Talking to me like I was still precious to God, that he still had a purpose for my life. She'd look down at me and go, oh, you sinner, you know, you've got to repent. God's going to judge you. No, she treated me like the, with respect and dignity. And you know what? God fulfilled his word, didn't he? God fulfilled his word, and he will do it. Don't let go of the bones of promise. Hold on to what God said so you can fulfill your destiny. The past also needs to be linked 
to our future. It's another thing that this box, this coffin can represent. And you know what? Like I said before, as a former student of revival history, what I see Christians doing today is they're com compromising solid biblical doctrine and convictions, the convictions of our fore forerunners or our forefathers. And, and, and what's happened is we have people in the last, the centuries that have passed that brought the great awakening, that brought revival to our nation, that stood for truth. And they, they, they were running the race and they're going with the baton and, and they hand the baton to us and we grab it and we start running like this. You know, we're going over here, we're over here, and then we're uh, going here, and we're like, and we're not running our race very effectively. Why? Because we're forgetting we got to take our past with us. Got to look at, for every book you read now, a modern book, you should be reading a book from one of Charles Spurgeon or someone like that from the past who had solid doctrine that wasn't all over the place. How many know that's happening today? You can go online and there's so much goofy teaching. It has no solid biblical doctrine. It's not about holiness anymore. It's about pleasure and it's carnal. And, and I'm saying you've got to take the past with you. If you leave the coffin behind, you just think you're going to walk into things of God. Your destiny is, your, your purpose and your destiny is attached to the past. Amen? How long do we have to hold on to the promises? How long do you got to carry those bones? Well, let's, let's look at Joshua. Joshua chapter 24, verse 32. The bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel had brought up out of Egypt, they buried at Shechem in a plot of ground which Jacob had bought from the sons of Haman, the father of Shechem, for 100 pieces of silver, and which had become an inheritance of the children of Joseph. You carry the promise until it's fulfilled. There was a prophetic word that this land will be yours. Joseph was taken out of it. He was thrown into a well, ended up in Egypt. Lit God prospered him in Egypt. He did well. But then he came out of Egypt, and he was planted back where he started in that plot of land that God promised would be his. Amen? So whatever God has promised you, whatever prophetic words have been spoken over you, hold fast to them because God wants to bring you to fruition. He wants to fulfill that word in your life. But too quick, we just lay it down. Well, I guess God will never, that'll never happen. No, hold fast to that word which was spoken over you. Amen? I believe that God has a great destiny for so many people here. And we've had some prophetic voices. We've had some prophetic guys come in who I would consider really solid guys that have prophesied the word of the Lord and if any of you have lost those, we've got them all recorded. We can get them. You can listen to them. If it bears witness with your spirit, then you say, hey, you know what? I believe this, God. I'm going to press into this. And you begin to carry those bones of promise again. Don't let them fall. Don't cast them out because it seems too heavy to carry. Shoulder the promises of God, and you'll get your victory. Amen? And we see that even in, we see it all through the scripture, but I see um, uh, in the life of Joshua. Joshua's going in against a city called Jericho, and there's these, all these walls around, around the city, correct? And God says to him, I want you to march around the walls every day, and then on the seventh day, I want you to go around seven times, and I want you to blow the trumpets, and when you do, the walls are going to tumble down. Now, I want to say this. If you're a military strategist, and God speaks a word like that to you, you're going to go, That's, people are going to think I'm crazy. People are going to think I'm loony, right? And so he goes out with the, 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 the armies of Israel, and they're marching around the wall. They're going around the wall. They do it seven days in a row. The seventh day, they do it seven times to blow the trumpet. And guess what? God fulfills his word. I want to tell you that there was people on the wall laughing at Joshua. What is wrong with this nutcase? And when God speaks a promise to your life, everyone around you, family members, people in the world, friends are going to look and go, that'll never happen. You'll never accomplish that. You can never do that. That's, that's impossible. No, but what's possible with God? It's possible with God. Amen? If God has spoken it over, you can do it. It doesn't matter what anybody says. People can laugh, but at the end of the day, those walls are coming down because God has promised it. Amen? And so I, wanted, I just wanted to encourage you guys this morning to carry the bones of promise. Carry your past into your future. And don't let them be heavy. Just carry them because God will fulfill them. Amen? And that's pretty much all I had for you today. But why don't we stand for a moment?
Actually, I do have one more thing. Sit down. <laughs> Paul said to Timothy, you'll have the strength to fight the good fight of faith. There's warfare. How many know there's warfare against our spiritual life? And if we don't have the promises to hold on to, we can't overcome. And I remember when I went to finish Bible school, and as a teenager, I did a lot of drugs and LSD. I overdosed on LSD and almost went into a coma. And that affected my mind for many, many years. And I remember being in Bible school and really not being able to remember a passage. Of sc- I would read, I'd read a verse, and I'd go to preach on it, and I'd forget the verse. And I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, cap- I couldn't capture my thoughts. I, I, I couldn't get my words out. And it was like there was this attack against my mind constantly because of the damage. And I went before the Lord, and I, God gave me the scripture, 2 Timothy 1, 7. says, For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but love, power, and in the Amplified, it says, a well-disciplined mind. And I said that every day. And even though I didn't feel, I still felt crazy. Every day I declared that. And I'd come to church and I'd feel the presence of God, but I left still feeling oppressed. I couldn't, the presence of God wasn't there, couldn't set me free. It was holding on to the, the promise of God that activates the presence of God. And so what happened was, uh, for a year, I kept quoting that over myself kept believing that and it was about a year and one day it broke and it was like I could think clearly the fog was gone why because I refused to let go of the promise of God I refused and I held on I said I'm going to hold on Lord this is your promise you know what I don't care if it takes a year I'm going to keep holding on and it came isn't that awesome you guys also know the story with our little daughter Sarah I don't know if you guys enjoyed when Gary Hayes came. Did you guys enjoy? But it, it was, it was life changing for us because he prophesied over our daughter. And he said, the Lord has shown me that your daughter is called to dance. God's going to use her in, the, in dance to bring glory to God. So that was really cool. Well, a week later, we got a diagnosis from the hospital. They said that they felt, they thought that she had arthritis and that she would, they were saying you might have to take her to the sick kids in Toronto for the rest of her life. Uh, like we don't know, they were doing blood work and all this stuff, and they, they were speaking all this stuff and saying, you know, because she couldn't walk. She was all crippled up. And immediately my wife and I said, no, that can't be because we just received the prophetic word of promise that she's going to be a dancer, so this is just an attack of the enemy. And every day we just, thank you, God, she's going to be a dancer. You've called her to be a dancer, so this arthritis has to go. This is an attack of the enemy. And what we did was we focused on the promise. We held fast. We looked at the promise, the prophetic promise, and within two weeks she was completely healed. Amen? So this is why we hold fast to the promises. Keep our eyes on, say this, I got to carry two boxes. The ark of his presence and the box of, what what did I call it? The promises. Promises. Amen. That's it. Well, let's stand and we'll pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that... We have an opportunity to be together and hear your word today, Father. And we, we recognize that we're, we're pilgrims in progress and we're moving forward into the destiny that you have for us. And Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you would help each and every one of us. Even as I was preaching the word, may, maybe there were people here that were thinking, I, I laid down that promise too early. Lord, help us identify those bones of promise that we can go pick them up again and stand in faith till we see the fruition in Shechem, in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen, amen, amen.